Hello there, Nicholas from Multiminds here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own Docker data science container that you can run locally on your own computer or in the cloud. So let's jump right in and talk about why you would use Docker to build your own data science container. Why not just install Jupyter Notebooks locally on your own machine? Well, if you have a team of data scientists, ideally you would want them to run exactly the same environment. This guarantees that the notebooks one person creates can easily be shared and will run smoothly on everyone else's computer. This is especially true when not everybody in your team has the same hardware setup. Like here at Multiminds, some people use a Mac while others use a PC. And let's say that for some projects you need more computing power than your PC can handle. Well, you can easily spin up a high-performance Linux instance in the cloud and run your notebooks that you've developed locally. And lastly, when a new data scientist joins your team, he or she doesn't have to go through the painstaking process of configuring a completely new environment. You can just share the Docker file and spin up a new container within seconds. So, let's get started. To begin with, we need Docker installed on our system. And maybe, for those of you who are not familiar with Docker, let's quickly go over exactly what Docker is. Docker is basically a tool to easily create, deploy and run applications in a container. The big advantage here is that containerized applications will run on any system independent of any customized settings that a machine might have. In a way, Docker is a bit like a virtual machine. But unlike a virtual machine, Docker doesn't have to create a whole virtual OS and keeps it lightweight by using the same kernel as the host computer. So go to docker.com and create an account. Also I'm using a Mac for this video, but these instructions will work on Windows and Linux as well. Once you created a Docker account, find the get started page and follow the instructions to install Docker for your operating system. To test if you successfully installed Docker, open your command line terminal and run Docker as a command. If the installation went well, you should see a list of Docker options and commands. Now it's time to create our Docker file. A Docker file is a text document that contains all the commands you can call on the command line to assemble an image. Open your favorite editor and create the Docker file you can see here on the screen. If you just want to copy and paste, you can also find the Docker file in the video show notes. Now let's go over the contents of the Docker file. In the first line, we tell Docker what image to use as our base image. In our case, that's the latest version of Ubuntu. Next, we install Python 3 and pip, which we'll use to install other Python libraries. In this example, we'll be installing a number of common data science libraries, like NumPy, Pandas, TensorFlow, etc. Of course, you can add or remove Python libraries to customize your own setup. Finally, we create a new user to run our Jupyter notebooks. Set the home directory and make sure Jupyter runs at startup. Next, we need to build our image using the docker build command. Because we named our docker file docker file, we don't need to specify the file name. Otherwise, you need to specify it using the dash f option. The only optional argument I'm adding here is the dash t option, to create a tag for our image so we can easily identify it later. Building the container can take a while, but luckily we only need to do this once. When it's done, you should see successfully built plus the image ID in the terminal. This image ID is important if you want to run a container. If you need to find the ID again, you can use docker images command to list all your images. Now all we need to do is run it. And not surprisingly, this is done with the docker run command. To run a container, all we need is the image ID. But here we're also adding dash IT, which creates an interactive bash shell inside the container and dash p to expose Jupyter, which runs on port 8888 on our machine's local host. After you run this command, you should be presented with a link you can paste into your browser to access your Docker notebook container. So go ahead and try it out. As you can see here, I started a new notebook, imported some libraries and plotted a random data frame. This all seems to work fine, but there's still some stuff we need to do for this to be a durable option. Right now, if you close your terminal or stop the process using Ctrl C, your notebooks will be shut down. And what's more, when you rerun your container, all your notebooks will be lost. So how do we solve this? First, we need to create some form of persistent storage. 
We do this by creating a volume using the docker volume create command. And we give it a name so we can easily refer to it. Now we will update our docker run command with two options. With dash v we will bind our newly created volume to the folder where Jupyter saves its notebooks. And we use dash d to run the container in the background so we can close the terminal without killing the running container. If we want to stop the container later, we can use the docker ps command to find the active container's name and use the docker stop command to stop the running container. And if you'd like to restart your container, you would use the docker start command. Also, if you need to find the link to your Jupyter notebooks, you can use the docker lock command to display the terminal's output of a specific container. So that's it. You've now learned how to create your own docker data science container that can be deployed on any machine you wish. Thank you for watching. Be sure to check out the video notes and download the Docker file to try it yourself. Thank you.